to The Morning Scoop for Thursday, September 28th. My name, again, is Ryan McClincy, and on today's episode, we'll be looking ahead to Saturday's matchup with Rutgers. Uh, before we do that, be sure to like this video, give us a five-star review, and if you haven't already, go ahead and press that subscribe button so that you can keep up with all the Ohio State content you crave from the best damn beat in the land, Buckeye Scoop. Now, let's get you your daily Buckeye fix. Now, with me today, I have, yet again, the uh, the fabulous Bill Green. So, Bill, welcome. Welcome. How are you doing today? Glad to be here again. Two days in a row here, so. I know, it's, it's uh, unprecedented. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah, good good, uh, good stuff, as as always. So, uh, thank you again for being here. Um, I know it's, uh, yeah. it's a quick turnaround from yesterday as well, but uh, I appreciate you making the time. Um, you know, I, for one, very excited to hear your thoughts on, on this matchup or I guess scrimmage matchup, whatever you want to call it. Uh, 41, 41 point spread is, uh, more of a scrimmage in my opinion, but who knows The the gray team might, uh, might put up more of a fight in the, in the April, April matchup than, than Rutgers we might find, but, uh, Rutgers has a lot going on, um, before we kind of dive in and, and really get into everything though. Did want to set the stage a little bit with some of the Scar- Scarlet Knight statistics through week four so far um, and just give a give a broad eye view of uh, of kind of where they're at, who they faced uh, and some of the, the leaders on the team statistically. Uh, so to this point, four weeks in uh, week one, 22, 21 at Boston College win. Uh, nothing crazy there. Week two, somehow they put up 66 points. Though it was Wagner, 66-7. They did get the W there at home. Uh, in week three, they were on the road again, which is a little bit weird to me, and, and maybe not weird, but uh, it's a little strange, and, and maybe I'm uh, just biased by having five straight home games <laughs> to start the season. Um, but at Temple, they won 16-14. to 14, uh, And then week four, they ended up losing uh, to Iowa at home, 27-10. to 10. Um, I was a little bit surprised by their defensive numbers. Um, I'm not sure if you you knew this, but they're ninth right now in total defense, which was surprising to me. Um, 98th in total offense, 28.5 points per game, about a 38% uh, third down efficiency, 67% fourth down, a good mix run and pass in yards per game, total of uh, 367 with about 181, 185 both ways. Uh, and then just about... Uh, what is it, 68% red zone efficiency. So not too bad there. Defense, on the other hand, 17.3 points per game, allowing 250 yards per game and 4.16 yards per play. Uh, They've given up seven offensive touchdowns all year. Six have been in the red zone, and they are actually giving up 100% of red zone uh, drives to opponents to to score. So bodes well for the Buckeyes on Saturday as, uh, as well. A twenty-six point four percent third down efficiency, and then the the leaders here: Evan Simon, sophomore quarterback, six three two oh five, sixty one percent completion percentage so far this year for five hundred sixty six yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, the leading rusher right now is Kyle. Probably going to butcher his last name. Mon Monangai, Monangai. Do you know? I'll let you add that one. <laughs> I'll I'll run with it. I'll run with it. Uh, he's a sophomore running back, 5'9", 205, 42 attempts, 157 yards on the season, two touchdowns as a 3.7 yard per average. Uh, one thing I, I did note too, his longest run this year, seven yards, um, longest, mm-hmm. crazy. Uh, and then the leading wide receiver, we, we've kind of come to know him over the years, Aaron Crookshank, uh, yeah. senior, 5'10", 170. 158 yep. yards on the season so far and two touchdowns. Uh, and then their leading tackler defensively now is uh, Christian Ezian, a senior defensive back leading in tackles. Crazy. Uh, 5'10", 210, or 200 with 33 tackles and one and a half sacks. So not some not really crazy numbers. Um, a lot was, was pretty much what I expected uh, to see a little bit uh, of some kind of strange facts that, that kind of come along with it. But uh, I'd love to start with you, get your thoughts just kind of on what you've seen so far with this Rutgers team, uh, what we should expect going into uh, to Saturday's game. Yeah, the thing with Rutgers is they are absolutely a team that can compete with the middlings and the bottom of the Big Ten. <clears throat> it's been a, a tough grind for Greg Schiano. Um in 18, 19, and then the COVID season of 2020, they won a total of six games, you know, and this is, mm. you know, they were the dregs of 
college football. You know, last year they won five games. You know, and I don't know if people realize, you know, what they did, you know, the, the climb they've made from winning six games in three years to now you win five last year. You know, people, they beat Syracuse last year by 10. You know, Syracuse is an undefeated yeah. team right now, okay? They beat Illinois on the road, you know? They beat Indiana last year 38-3, to three, okay? So there was some progress being made. Michigan, mm-hmm. playoff team Michigan. Michigan team that whomped Ohio State, Michigan didn't whomp Rutgers, yeah. 20 to 13, 20 to 13. So Shiano's making progress there. And I admire the guy, you know, that six starters back on each side of the ball. Great secondary. I mean, those guys are really good. A lot of those guys have started for several years. So, you know, I say all that to say that Ohio State's going to murder this team. This team is not ready for, yeah. for Ohio State or Bama or Georgia. They're not ready for that. You know, but, you know, the win over Boston College was a nice win. Mm. You know, so baby steps for Shiano. Um, they have no chance this week, you know, and I think the line is 41. I think it's a great line by Vegas. Yeah. Um, I feel that Ohio State is going to score between 40 and 50. It could be 60 or 70 mm-hmm. if things totally get out of hand, but I'm guessing Rutgers might battle them for a quarter. All they got to do is have a scoreless quarter or hold Ohio State to make them kick a few field goals, and then you're not going to score 70 then. Yeah. So so I'm guessing Ohio State in that 45 to 50 range, and then Rutgers, their offense is not really good at all, you know, so maybe they score 10, and if you get a 51 to 10 final, then there's your line of 41 yeah. points. Yep. So, you know, like I said, they have no chance this week. A couple of years ago, Shano played Ohio State really well. I think he ran every single trick play known to man. There was nothing oh, yeah. left, nothing left in that cupboard. I mean, it was reverses, halfback passes, throwbacks to the quarterback. There was nothing left. You know, he, he shot his, he shot everything he had that day. So, and like I said, I think people tend to just laugh at Rutgers and, you know, I think it's unfair. I mean, mainly because I respect Greg Shiano so mm-hmm. much. Um, and no, they're not going to be able to compete with Ohio State. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me ask you, uh, you yeah, know, since, since you mentioned it, um, you know, with yeah. Greg Shiano kind of getting there and, and everything, I know obviously you, uh, you're, you're fairly close with Chris Ash uh, as right. well. Right. And um, so I guess when, when Greg Shiano took this, job uh what were, what were your thoughts i mean did you kind of see him being able to to get it kind of in a in a better position or i guess kind of where were those expectations for you relative to kind of knowing you know what what chris ash had had been dealing with at uh, at Rutgers? yeah it's kind of well chris ash well uh, you know defensive coordinator at ohio state had done a great job led him to the national championship came back with a great yeah. defense the following year when they didn't make the playoffs lost to michigan state uh, Chris had his choice of Syracuse and Rutgers at that time and chose the Rutgers job. And he was promised by the administration improvements in the stadium, improvement in the facilities, uh, a bigger budget for assistant coaches. There were a lot of promises made that were never kept. Mm. And uh, Chris eventually was let go. You know, you are what your record says you are. Well, and before Greg Schiano agreed to take the job, all of those promises that were, you know, kind of suggested to Chris Ash. Mm-hmm. He got in writing built into his contract, and those things are being done, and it's helping him. Yeah. And Greg Shiano's a heck of a coach. He's a builder, man. People don't re- remember what Rutgers was 12, 15 years ago when they were fighting for a playoff spot, as hard as that is to believe, mm-hmm. and they were a power in the Big East. You know, so I, I think a lot of Greg Shiano, you know, but – you know, Rutgers in the Big Ten, there, there's a ceiling to every job, whether we're talking yeah. Alabama or Vanderbilt, you know. And Rutgers, the ceiling is probably that four, five, six, seven win window. You know, that's, yeah. that's who you are at this point. You know, so, I, I, again, I have a ton of respect for both Chris Ash and Greg Schiano, but, you know, um, it's not going to be a game this week at all. All my respect for Greg Shiano and all that, he's going to get whipped this week badly. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I expect to see uh, I expect to see more of the uh, the trick plays and uh, trying to get a little bit creative and, and fancy with it. But to, he has to. 
yeah. He has I mean, to. At the end of the day, you know, I mean, it, the, the defense is playing as if they were this the last year's team, uh, last year's defense, then I'd, I'd be a little bit more concerned because the big play, you know, was yeah. was our Achilles heel a lot last year. And, um, you know, those are what those are designed for, right? So uh, I think Jim Knowles has put me at ease with a lot of that as well because uh, you have to expect it going into a game like this from from a team like Rutgers and, and from Greg Shiano, who's shown it in the past. Um, yeah. And... and you know, the horses aren't there, um, but the the effort is chop the wood. Uh, you absolutely, know, absolutely. They will uh, they will come as he said to win in Columbus. Yeah, absolutely. And then from Ohio State, I mean, you know, from Ryan Day's point of view, he to me he has a tendency to leave those starters in yeah. really long, and he's done it ever since he's been here. He likes those big scores, and I get it. But you know, I think this week could be an opportunity where, you know, it, it could be time to pull CJ, CJ and the boys out, you know, yeah. with a 35 to three halftime lead, they've got to do something. And I don't know what that answer is with that backup quarterback spot. I mean, I think they're in a little bit of a quandary in that, you know, I think Kyle McCord is your backup Yeah. and if God forbid something would happen to CJ Stroud. I think it'd be Kyle McCord. So you've got to get him time but yet I know they're dying to see what Devin Brown can do. They, ha- they hold Devin Brown in such high regard. So I think, you know, for me, 35, three lead, I'm telling CJ take the pads off at yeah. half and I'm giving Kyle McCord the third quarter and I'm giving Devin Brown the fourth quarter. But, you know, Ryan Day knows a lot more about his team than I do. And, but that's just me looking at it in that you've got to get Kyle McCord some snaps, but yet, there's a part of me that I think and Ryan day, I think would love to see what Devin Brown can do because you're going to have a heck of a battle next year between those two for the starting job. So I guess those are the things I'm looking at this week, Um, play everybody on the roster, you know, guys that maybe haven't gotten some time that you wanted to get time. This is the week to do it. Yeah. Get everybody in, get the starters out. And they do have a lot of guys like minorly dinged up. So this is a great week, you know. Yeah, Michigan State at Michigan State next week too. Yeah, that's not, I mean, and you'd think that's going to be a a 45 nothing game, but it may not be. So, but this week will be. This week is the week. Get it 38-7 half, pull them out, and let these guys that are killing themselves in practice, give them some run. You know, give them a full quarter, two quarters, whatever. So that's what I'm looking for this week. You just don't want an injury, and it's football. It's a violent game. So injuries happen all the time. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to see it in a game like this. Yeah, I was a little surprised, uh, you know, they didn't let uh, Kyle McCord sling it a little bit uh, last week just with with the score being what it was. and. Right. You know, he had a lot of just handoffs and, you know, I really do, I, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see, and I think all, all of uh, Buckeye Nation is really curious to see what we're going to have next year, you know, because we, we yeah. all expect that CJ Stroud is, is going to be probably first, second off the board come April, yes. which is probably true. Um, and you got to know what you have. And I think the, the staff definitely does, you know, but, but I would be really curious. I, I like the idea of um, Kyle McCord third, uh, in Devin Brown fourth quarter and just give him the the whole quarter to work with. Personally, I, I do think, uh, you know, CJ Stroud and the starters come out for one series after halftime um, just to, to get those reps as well and, and get that, uh, that feel for the game. But uh, after that, I, I agree. I, I don't see it being a close game at that point to, to keep them in and, and get in Kyle McCord, get in Dallin Hayden, get in everybody that you can and, and see what you got. Yeah. And also this second team offensive line. Yeah. That, I don't think it, I don't think they've played all that well this year when they've gotten in, and that's you know the nitpickiest nitpicky yeah. thing you can mention about a team playing this well. But I I don't think those guys have played all that well this year. So I think that second team O line needs to get a little more reps too. Yep, that's it's a thin room. I saw a, a couple comments from uh, from the video yesterday uh, on on our YouTube channel of you know asking about. Are we going to, are we giving up on the offensive line here? It's a, it's a thin room. Like we need, we need some more of the big names, you know, to, to come in from there and, you know, takes time, you know, those, those relationships will come. Justin Fry have full confidence in, in his ability to get him there. 
but yeah, uh, you, you got to get those guys some reps here as early in the season as you can, because it's only going to get tougher. Yeah. Um, any, I guess from a player perspective and, and a matchup perspective specifically from, from what Rutgers has to offer, um, you know, is there anything specifically you're looking at and, and watching to kind of just see how maybe the, the Ohio state players react, maybe how, how we're able to match up and, uh, anything that's kind of like your key to the game for, for any of those matchups. Yeah, that's kind of tough because the talent differential is just so great. Mm. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm reminded of, you know, the Iowa State staff that I know real well, <clears throat> you know, and they talk about when they play Oklahoma, you know, and Oklahoma runs out of their tunnel and there's not one of those 85 scholarship guys that Iowa State wouldn't love to have. Yeah. And the opposite is when Iowa State runs out, there's not one of those guys Oklahoma recruited or they would have them. So, and this is the same thing. You know what I mean? So the talent differential is really great. The one area of Rutgers that I that I think can really play is that secondary. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing some of the matchups with Big Buka and, and, and Marvin Harrison, you know, going against that Rutgers secondary. That group's really good. They're talented. Um, they're very experienced. The only thing is, you know, when they play Ohio State, <clears throat> they're not going to have that any pass rush at all like they got against Temple, like they got against yeah. BC. So those guys are going to be on islands for five or six seconds, <clears throat> and nobody covers Marvin Harrison and Ibuka for yeah. five or six seconds. But I still think they're going to present possibly some challenges for Ohio State just because of their talent and their experience. So that would be one matchup that I'm really looking forward to see, just to see how Shiano's secondary you know, goes against the, the great Buckeye wideouts. Yeah, there's not many that uh, that can do it well. I've uh, found at least not uh, across the board. So yeah, might be it might be another Kate Stover day. Might be another, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know who else. Uh, Xavier Johnson maybe gets a, gets another touchdown. I think uh, I, I feel good about that one. But um, but no, I I agree. I think that'll be interesting. That's that's always a good one to to keep an eye on and see those players really perform the way that they need to, especially with Jackson Smith and Jigba, who knows, you know, what, what's happening there when he's going to be able to come back, hopefully by Penn state, you know, it gives him a lot of time to rest, but fingers crossed, you know, we gotta, we gotta get those next guys up and and ready to, to perform at the highest level for sure. Um, game predictions. You kind of took all of my game predictions. I'm not going to lie. So, um, uh, what, what is your, kind of game prediction how do you think the game flow is going to be what the, what the game script is for ryan day kind of to come out and, and really uh perform the way that we did against wisconsin and, and get started really early and come out firing yeah i um <clears throat> i think vegas has got it right like i said before i think when you see a 41 point spread you think 51 10 and that's probably how i see it right now um, you know, I'll do my complete breakdown on mm. Friday of how I see this. And those are really hard breakdowns to do with a game like yeah. this. Um, yeah, I, I think 51-10 is about it with a 31-3 halftime score. And, you know, you go from there. Um, game script, I just think, you know, Ohio State defensively, this should be a week where it, it's probably a shutout or yeah. – you know, seven point here, or 10 at the most. I just don't see Rutgers is just not able to really move the ball. Yeah. You know, when you score 16 on Temple, you're not getting many on Ohio State, you know. So that that part will be interesting. And then offensively, I mean, it's it's what Ryan Day wants. How bad, how many points do you want to score? Mm-hmm. Want to keep C.J. Stroud in till, you know, midway of the fourth quarter? Then he's going to score 65 or 70. Yeah. You know, so, but I, I kind of think they're going to dial it back after halftime with, you know, Michigan State is a game that I think is, we look at it as, you know, it should be a blowout, but I guarantee Ryan Day doesn't look at Michigan State that way. No. That's respect for the talent on that team. They've upset Ohio State in the past, ruined some seasons. Uh, Mel Tucker is highly respected in the profession. So I don't think Ryan Day is going to look at next week first road game for Ohio state. Also, mm-hmm. I think he's going to take that game, you know, yeah. super seriously. So I, I think it could be some liberal substituting this week. I'm hoping anyway, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping to see guys that haven't got much of a chance to play this year, especially the guys. I mean, they kill themselves in practice week after yeah. week. And this is the one time 
when you can really empty the boat here and let them all play. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I think first road game, you know, the, the team hasn't been tested really as much, you know, I mean, Notre Dame, yes, to an extent. Um, but the, the road atmosphere is, is you can't simulate that, you know, in, in practice, you can't simulate it um, against a team like Rutgers as well. So I, I definitely think there's, there's not going to be much overlooking from that perspective, especially like you said, 2015 heart heartbreaking uh, team, best team I've seen in a while should have won back to back. And just to play the way that we played in that game was absolutely yeah. miserable yeah. to watch. But yeah. uh, they've they've definitely you know Mel Tucker uh, I think can can definitely coach maybe not ninety five million dollars worth but you know he's he's a heck of a coach and and he'll have yeah. those guys ready and, and I think Ryan Day will too and part of that kind of starts this week. And another thing is when you're at home you're dressing one hundred and twenty guys. I mean you, mm-hmm. everybody that practices dresses so you can get them all in the game. When you travel you yeah. don't travel with yeah, the yeah. whole the whole shebang, you know, it's a limited roster. So this is the week, you know, let everybody play, get them all in there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, like I said, you stole my game predictions. I think it'll be a little bit different. Um, I do think Stroud comes out, like I said, plays uh, one series in the third quarter with the starters. Uh, They come down, score, um, and then he's done. They're all done. Um, I do think Rutgers, you know, maybe – gets a, a mid to late fourth quarter touchdown similar to the Braylon Allen run, maybe something like that, that, uh, that leads to a backdoor cover, uh, final score in my eyes, probably like 55, 17. That's what I, is what I have. Um, so close Vegas is still right on the money pretty uh, yeah, much. They're good. Yeah. They're good. <laughs> um, yeah. and, uh, just for the extra spice, I do think uh, Xavier Johnson gets another touchdown. Okay. I'm calling okay. it. Calling it. <laughs> good deal. Good deal. And, uh, and to our loyal listeners as well, be sure to, uh, to give us your game predictions in the comments below or hit us up on Twitter at Buckeye Scoop. Well, Bill, uh, I think that is, uh, is going to do it for us here talking about Rutgers. I think we've pretty much exhausted that at this point. Uh, <laughs> so thank you again for joining me today. Uh, and thank you, Buckeye Nation, for listening and or watching. Uh, for more great Ohio State content, be sure to download, like, and subscribe to the Morning Scoop podcast available wherever you listen to podcasts and to our YouTube channel. Of course, all of this and so much more is always available at BuckeyeScoop.com. While you're there, do yourself a favor, check out the Ask the Insiders board and join the incredible community of Buckeye fans on the premier site for all of your Ohio State needs. I am your host, Bill Green. Thank you again, Ryan McClincy and Bill Green, a match made in heaven, I think. Uh, And until tomorrow, go Bucks.